Well, welcome back, everyone. Just this past week, the FDA released a warning about medicine you probably have in your own home. The agency says non-aspirin pain relievers like Advil, Motrin, and Aleve do increase your risk of heart attack or stroke. And these are brand names for ibuprofen and naproxen. You know, many people are wondering if they should even take them at all. Well, Dr. Tom McMinn from the Heart Hospital of Austin is here with us this morning to clear up any confusion. Good morning to you. Good morning, Erin. So I think we've reported on this somewhat in the past saying they may cause a heart attack or stroke, but now it seems there is no question about it. There's no maybe in there. Yes, that's true. It's been a concern for many years that some drugs may increase your risk of heart attacks or strokes. The question has been how much of a risk but the FDA has increased their warning on um, bottles, on over-the-counter medications and uh, prescription uh, medications in this category of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs as they're called, um, that indeed these do increase your risk of a heart attack or a stroke. Mm -hmm. So what should people do at home right now? Should they go through their medicine cabinet and just, just chunk all of these? No, it's not a, uh, a reason to panic. And these are important medications, meaning that um, some people uh, are helped by these or certainly need these for reasons for, um, for pain control, for anti-inflammatory action, for uh, fever. However, um, as with any medication, there's a risk and there's a benefit, and the benefits have to outweigh the risks. Mm -hmm. So um, some people in particular may have a higher risk with these medications. So if you've had a heart attack within the last six months or 12 months, um, or if you have heart failure, or if you've had a stroke, these may be things that increase your risk of taking these medications of having a higher risk of another heart attack or a stroke. Or maybe a family history of some um, of those things as well? To some extent. Um, the, so again, certainly the medications can be necessary and useful, but it has to be um, in the proper circumstances. And so with any, as with any medication, you should take the lowest dose that's effective for you and for the shortest amount of time. Got it. And even with this change, I know they're also asking uh, manufacturers to change the labeling on the products. Exactly. There'll be a couple of places that the labeling will change. One is on the drug facts on the back of a bottle. So if you look at your over-the-counter prescription or over-the-counter non-prescription medications, it will have a section called drug facts with these warnings. That will have a stronger warning on it. Additionally, uh, there's prescription medications that are anti-inflammatory drugs, and those will have a change in their prescribing information. Some drugs are not included in this category, so meaning that Aspirin, although it's an anti-inflammatory drug, um, decreases your risk of heart attacks or strokes, so it's not part of the warning. Another drug, acetaminophen, which is sold under uh, the brand name Tylenol, um, is a medication for pain, um, and that's not increasing this risk either. Mm -hmm. So what is the alternative? Should some people switch to the medications you just mentioned that aren't under this umbrella? Exactly. That would be the answer for some people, but some people really do need the uh, non steroidal medications, and the best answer, if there is a question, is talk talking with your physician who knows you best and can help figure out the risks and the benefits. And again, if you do need to take it, and these are very common medications, if you do need to take them, taking them for a lower dose and the shortest amount of time is important. Dr. McMahon, thank you so much for being here this morning. If you're still confused and didn't catch all the names of, of what's on the good list and what you shouldn't take too much of, we're going to put it on our website later this morning with this interview at kxan.com.